morning, everybody. All right, well, we're back into the dungeon. At least it feels like that now. I'm gonna have to get this old standing tub or standing shower slash little tub out of here. Then we're gonna start knocking this floor out and then we're gonna see what's exactly under here and under all of this and see exactly what's going on. So when I get my part list together, I'll be able to get everything. Now, if you remember the last video, like obviously the framing everywhere is just kind of piecemeal together just to make it do its job of hanging up the board. So <laughs> we can't just, you know, start taking walls out, even though in an ideal world, that's what you would want to do. Like stuff like this, you just have odd framing. We get the boards in the back of the tub and then they, they framed over on top just to make it work because they had this to work. They basically framed around this guy. It should go the other way around, but it is what it is. So we're going to have to take this tub out and kind of leave this because we don't want to knock the wall down. So leave this. I'm going to fur this out so it's around the same as this. Actually, this might have to come out. We're going to change this board because if you just look up here, obviously the wall is not in the plane with this framing for that hallway wall. See the offset there? It's pretty silly. So we'll fur this out to match this and kind of add back in because we're not touching the door frame or anything. You know, this wall seems okay. Even though there's after the demo, They had these little nails holding in the sheetrock. So obviously that little tiny head, it's not gonna hold much rock or paper when it's flexing with the bangs and the pools of the wall because it's a two by three wall. So if you do a renovation in an old bathroom, keep that in mind of the walls behind because stuff will pop up. But we have paint, we have plaster, no big deal. Quick, easy fix up here. This bathroom was an extension, so if you see, they just have a through, kind of a butterfly wing nut action going, I forget the name of them, but that's what's holding the wall. I think there's one there too. Where is it? No, it's a knot and nail. <laughs> Anyhow, so they have one, keeping this wall straight, minus, or including all that crown molding or whatever, that will help a little bit. But that's not adequate, so we're going to put blocks in here. Probably three of them. And then screw right up to the blocks to really reinforce that wall. Because it's going to be holding, you know, 200 pounds of tile and mortar. Thin set. So, it needs to hold it up without popping seams down in the future. And then this framing has to come out first. Because we can't take this framing out. And both these lips for the tub, there's a lip for a tub. So when the water gets back there, that's why nothing should be touching it. Not even your, if you do sheetrock in a shower, not your sheetrock, not your dew rock, it should be floating above. So if there's a water channel, it'll come out and hit the floor and show a leak, not get trapped and create mold. Like some of this did, but it's really not as bad as I would have expected to be honest. I've seen way worse. Again, this, because he did, whoever did this, did no membrane anywhere on top of the boards. So, as you know, or you should know, concrete is not a water blocker. It'll soak in to a certain depth and then hit the wood because it's only half inch thick. And then, you know, you get little mold deposits, which this is really nothing. This whole frame is going to come out anyway and whatever is going to stay, you just spray with bleach and it kills the mold. And, uh, you know when it's killed because it turns white. So, at least the black mold does. And then we'll take this framing out because I have to figure out what I want to do here. If you remember, the toilet is tight here. At least to the wall, there's not a lot of gap. So, I can't necessarily just fur this out and call it a day because I still have a hose to get around this corner and to fasten it for the shutoff and the the fill for the tank. So 
anyway, things to be addressed after we make a list, but we still have demo to do. So pop this framing out, disconnect the plumbing. I'm going to try and rock this thing out, pull it out this way, and then shift it this way to get it out of this framing. Because I'm not too sure how they did it, because there is a lip there. At least there should be. Forgive the camera angles. See that little lip right there? Keeps the water from flowing back into the walls. Anywho, and that should have been further this way because the board should rest on that lip or just in front of it. The board should have rested right here. Just floating above the surface, but right over this lip. So any water going down the wall hits the, you know, hits this pan and goes back down into the drain. Anywho, let's prep up, get this thing out, and then uh, we'll have eyeballs on that plumbing at least. We relatively know what this one's going to be. But once we break the floor, we're really going to know if I have to weld on a new flange and all that nonsense. Getting pretty good at it though, so let's check it out. It's always cool to rig up a little light so I can actually see where you're working. It's much better. I might fix the quality of the video too, huh? Let me know. All right. So we have a mixture of sheetrock screws. Good old plumber style. It's called toe screwing. And old fashioned nails, probably 10 pinning. Maybe not. So we'll whack all these out and we'll get this old wall out of here. This is the original wall. This is the original framing for the wall. They just put, uh, one by three quarter thickness planks on the wall and then screw sh you know plasterboard to it cheap quick and effective this is a wall separating two homes so it's not like it's an exterior wall it's not going to hurt the plumbing or anything frost will never really get in here unless uh i don't know the world after tomorrow movie happens <laughs> something like that all right get your tools get it going Plumbing framing out. Now to the wall. Switches up to nails, so you're gonna need something called a cat's paw. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. That's why they call it a cat's paw. At least that's how I was taught to call it. Sometimes they're marketed as a bear claw, whatever. It's a little damn nail puller. I've had that one for about 20 years. That's how much abuse they can take. Show you why they're so cool right here. See that now? Get behind it. Nails out. These inside ones, usually you can just knock it down. And this backing will be your support. I just pull them right out. There you go. That's loose now. Let's get these out loose.
have a guest. So now that this wall is off, we might have enough room to swing this bad boy up this way and get it out. Maybe. It might be locked in from the floor as well, so we'll see. But let's get this crap out of our way first. Remember, this stuff's under pressure, so just be careful. Only had like two little cotter pins in there. I think that's what they're called. See how much corrosion's down there? You could just start seeing the brass. These will screw off and they're connected to a pipe going this way up and then down. That's for the airflow, that's for the drain, obviously. This guy's kind of roached. I don't think I'll be able to get that off, but I will scrape around and spray it with some penetrating stuff. Hopefully that'll do something because I'd rather get this off easier than accidentally pop the pipe off the bottom and drop water on the ceiling below. Something silly like that because there's a little airlock down there with the trap, the P-trap. We'll see. All right, after penetrating oil, you see those threads down there on the side, right there? And there was a tab right there connecting to that side. Well, those threads are shot and all corroded. I'd love if this would focus right there. You go. So anyway, right down there was the issue. It's corroded. This thing's basically welded on. That's not going to come off. I'm sure there's a tool that can do it forcibly. You see that crack too. So, stuff's garbage anyway, so just take a hammer that you're not uh, too worried about hurting, or a little sledgehammer, crack this up, break it up so it stays as a piece, and then I can get this unit moving. It's really the only option. We don't, we don't need to be delicate about it. Protect those eyeballs. crack starting now mind you i'm only using a uh, 14 ounce titanium hammer it's a framing hammer it's a badass hammer but you really want to use something heavier five pound sledgehammer or something a couple cracks and that would have been done it's all right though You can see it's basically free. Got a little framing down there. So that's free. You can tell it's pretty strong stuff, right? So now we'll be able to see relatively if this thing will shift or not. I could feel heavy cast iron framing. Yeah, this thing's locked in the floor. All right, well, it had to be done regardless. So we're gonna have probably two inches of floor to crack up here before we can release this tub because it's really in there. Let's get on it, peoples.
just like I thought. So we have old tiles, mortar, new tile. See how connected they are? Not very connected, are they? That's why you don't do that. Because that is a smooth, glossy, enameled surface. Mortar, almost anything, won't really stick properly to that unless it's etched or something fancy. And those tiles were not, I mean, I put a lot of force obviously just now, but it's not really down. If it just all pops and separates, there was no adhesion, no connection. You know, say lobby. Let's get it up. Excuse me, three floors. That's another tile, it's blue now. One surface, the second, and the third. If I find a fourth, I'm just gonna die laughing. But that looks like the oldest, that's, you know, 50s, 60s colors. They didn't really use that a lot in the 70s. 70s, it went brown and yellows. And this looks like the 90s. Going through generations, folks. We're time traveling. All right. Now you can see that was the level, that piece right there. That's what was really locking it in, and now we're right under the actual casting. So just pop that whole edge off, then we should get it out. <laughs> she's loose now. Oh my gosh, she's heavy. Yep, she's loose. I'm gonna have to get a bigger hammer and break this bad boy up though. It probably weighs 350, 400 pounds. It's pretty heavy. Break it up and bag it. Not fun, but that's life. All right, couldn't find my sledgehammer, so four and a half pound forging hammer. That ought to do the trick. Make sure you cover your eyes, folks, if one of these Cheryl, and keep your teeth closed. One of these shards comes off and hits you in the face. Well, it's really gonna mess you up your day. Just be mindful when you're swinging through. A little damage there from when it hits this immovable object when it finally goes through. And if you're choked up on the hammer and your fingers are down there and this goes through, like there, well, that's gonna hurt a bit. It's gonna make you bleed right open. So just be mindful, keep this angle. way if I can because there's no wall back here the front there's a wall there's no wall back here but this lip will push against the wall I'm probably gonna want to try and break it in half and then break it up from there so I'm not destroying that outside the wall too much probably Crack. Now it's 
Maybe two pieces right there. Never leave your legs behind where you're swinging. See what I mean? Cast iron is not light. <sighs> anyway, you take this slow and steady if you ever have to do this because you'll get hurt quick. I don't like wearing gloves, so I always have something like that at the end of it. That's actually an old cut. I just opened it back up. But, uh, you can see that's pretty thick stuff. Be careful, people. That's half of what's left. Doesn't look like much once you break it down, huh? Plumbing out. And apparently, it had a center drain one time in the shower. Like it will now. Alrighty. Alright, here's the tub out, all cleaned up. You can see what the... <laughs> Kind of a weird situation going on here. I don't get what all these blocks are doing. <laughs> but that's what he did, whoever. Old plumbing. Now you can kind of see how that worked. You got the air or the overfill and then the flow. Connected here. And it ran straight down here. Right there. Center screen, focus. There you go. Anywho, now you probably can't see shit, but all the way down there, yeah, you can't see shit. All the way down there, there's actually a lead bend with a, a trap in it, so that's the airlock. There, because there obviously wasn't one here, it just went straight everywhere. So we'll address that. This is the actual hardwood floor from that room that continued on. They just built this shower on top of it. So we'll see if that has to be taken up. Because I want my uh, leveling to be around this height. We'll see how far we go with it once we get this flooring up and how bad everything is. All right, so now you can see the flooring. Obviously the mesh nailed to the wood. You have your sand coat. Then your first layer of tiles. So these are most likely the original set. Then you have, I think this is the tile that the current homeowner came into the house with. And then she put these on and then now we're starting anew. So, and that's good. You can see there was some tar paper to separate the masonry from the wood. That's really good. It'll preserve the flooring. That's how you're supposed to do it. So we'll start getting this out of here and then uh, we'll start laying out and rebuilding from there. There was a little, I don't know, focus, damn it. There's a little rot here. Kind of feels like a dry rot. But whatever. You can see a little bit of moisture got in. Just basically those two guys. And it's a little bit of the mold on that rim board. There was really no supports for all the weight of this cast iron. So it was really just resting on this floor. So that happens, I guess. Original wallpaper. Replace whatever we need to frame it properly. This will have, to, I don't <laughs> I mean, he just notched it so he can get it in there, which I guess is okay. But you just really undercut that whole wall for what just to get a tub in there. 
I would have just shifted the wall, but whatever. So that's what we're working with. Let's start getting this floor out. Go from there. <laughs> 